hiya humans. Uh, so in this video, we're going to be talking about independence. Um, and in this case, what I mean by independence is, okay, so in the last few videos, we talked about things that were dependent on one another, right? So um, passing the sex ex second exam was, dip or your chance of passing the second exam was dependent on how well you did in the first exam. Similarly, your chance of getting a chocolate was dependent on which bag you chose. Now, this is not always the case, right? So when we have something like that, we call them dependent events because they're dependent on one another. But this is not always the case, right? Like uh, if I flip a coin, it doesn't magically influence what this other coin is going to be doing. They're not dependent on one another. Similarly with rolling a dice. If I roll one die, um, the other die has doesn't care what the first die did. Like it's independent. Uh, and so when they're, they don't rely on one another, we call them independent events. Now, mathematically, um, we have to say, okay, well, what, how is this represented in a mathematical context? Um, so basically what we're saying is, okay, so if I have an event A um, and it doesn't change no matter what B is, then what I'm saying is that the, uh, oops, let's do black, that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A without B. They should be the same. And we're going to state this that this is equal to P. But not only that, but this should actually further imply that if I have the probability of A, um, now remember how this by the total probability thing, this is equal to A given B times the probability of B plus the probability. So here I'm doing this all in brackets probability of um, A given B complement times the probability of B complement. And here we know from above that this is P times PB plus P times PB complement. So this is on a side. What we want is this to be equal to P. So in other words, I want this to imply that the probability of A is equal to P. Um, and so this is basically what we call an independent, uh, we say that the, the two element, the two events are independent of one another. Uh, now this is kind of difficult to read and understand. This is kind of um, intuitively what we would think, right? Um, that the probability of A is equal to the probability of A given B, and it's equal to the probability of A without B. Like we don't actually care what this is. But let's look at a nicer way to kind of look at this. Um, if you look at what we're saying here is we're basically saying that the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A. So it's, an, it's that basically it. So everything above that I have above is basically boiled down to this thingy here. That's it. Nice and easy. But we can actually make this even easier. Um, so what we want is notice how the probability of A from above um, so from this previous thing, what we can say is if the probability of A is given to the probability of A given B, this, if you recall, is A intersect B over the probability of B, right? So what this means is I can bring this B to the other side and we get the third definition, which is the probability of A intersect B is the probability of A times the probability of B. This is generally another way that we kind of um, think about these things, right? So if you're rolling two die, um, then the chances of getting um, a one on the first one is one sixth. The chance of getting a one on the second one is one sixth. And the chance of getting one one is one sixth times one sixth, one thirty sixth. Um, and so this is also another way that we logically think about things. Um, and so technically, this third way um, is what's used commonly for the definition of an in independence. For our purposes, we can use any of these three definitions. I don't care. We can use um, this one, this one, or this first one. Oops. Uh, and all three kind of work nicely for us. Um, so let's look at a quick example. Um, and let's see how this looks in terms of um, independence. So what we're going to look at is an example of flipping a coin. Uh, so let's flip a coin. 
flipping a coin twice. So let's draw the tree diagram. Uh, so I can either get heads or tails. Uh, and then here, we'll do it this way because it's not too bad. I can either do heads for this first one or the second one. And here you see that we have one half, one half. We have one half, one half, one half, one half. Nothing really changes, right? They're all independent of one another. Um, and so notice how in this case, um, the way to kind of see this in this world uh, is to notice that no matter which one I started off with, whichever point I started off with, my probability distribution here is the same. I'm going to end up with the same thing. In other words, the probability of um, H, H, right, H and H, this is given by the probability of H. Uh, I guess I'll make these <laughs> little indexes so I know which one's which. Uh, Okay, so H1 and H2, this is given by the probability of H1 times the probability of H1 given, or sorry, H2 given H1. So this is, um, but this part, right, this is just equal to the probability of H2, right? It doesn't, it's not dependent on H1. So in this case, we have H1 times the probability of H2. Um, and so like in our tree diagrams, that's basically how we see it. We see that we look at each point and we see that they're all the same. If they're all the same, they're going to be independent. Um, if not, the only way to kind of look at it is by looking at these uh, definitions and seeing whether they fit the definition or not. Uh, and that's it. So this one was a fairly easy topic. Uh, next video, we'll look at sequences events and how doing multiple things kind of influence one another.